Hi, and welcome to another one of my video blogs. I am author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Uh, tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. I am doing a vintage book haul. And here is my uh, stack of books here. <laughs> now, when I say vintage, I'm talking, you know, about you know, 50 years plus. I know in you know different types of um, artifacts, collectibles, uh, merchandise, things like that, vintage always kind of has like a little bit of a different term. What may be, you know, 10 years vintage for know, like, uh, you know, designer purses, you know, may be something different for, you know, books or, um, you know, memorabilia or things like that. Um, you know, like baseball cards. But with, uh, I guess when I think of vintage, I think of things that are like 50 plus years old. And so these are all very old books. I'm going to start from um, the newest to the oldest. The first one I would not quite call vintage. And um, I'll get into that in a minute as to why. And as far as it being a haul, um, admittedly, I did not just buy all of these. Um, they've come to me over the years. Um, there's a uh, a uh, few of them that I got all at the same time, probably, I don't know, about eight years ago or something like that. So um, let's get into it. Now, the first book that I'm going to show here is Yankee Ghost by Hans Holzer. Now, the original printing, which was 1966, just barely misses that 50 year mark at 49 years, but um, this is not an original uh, printed copy. This is actually from uh, 1987. Um, so I'm kind of fudging it a little here with the very first one, um, just because you know it's a it's an older book, but I bring it here because it is actually one of the influences that got me interested in the paranormal. Um, when we were moving out of Massachusetts, as uh, when I was a kid, I was about 13 years old, and we were moving out of Massachusetts back to Ohio, my mother thought it would be a um, a nice kind of uh, memory and interesting way to remember where I'd spent the past 10 years of my childhood by getting me a book on ghost stories. And they are, you know, true ghost stories. For those of you who know about Hans Holzer or don't, um, you know, he is the guy that coined the term ghost hunter. You know, he wrote far over a hundred different books on, you know, on ghosts and, you know, true ghost stories and things that he had, you know, researched and experienced and, um, you know, different you know, investigations, for lack of a better term, uh, that he was called out to do, and um, really, really fantastic, true stuff. And so, you know, I, I bring it up here just because, like I said, it's an older book. The original printing of it kind of, you know, technically falls into that 50-year mark, you know, short by year. It's it, it, one of those influences for me. Now, the second book that I have, um, I actually got from an estate sale a few years back. And it is a 1936 edition of the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. And you can see it's, you know, quite thick here. It's the, uh, you know, complete collection of everything that he's written. Um, for those that have uh, been with me for a while on uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that, you probably recall me doing a Poe at Midnight where I was doing a quote from Edgar Allan Poe, um, Midnight Every Night. And this is basically where I was getting those quotes from. You know, I could have gone out on the, uh, you know, the internet and just grabbed them from a website or whatever. But I was actually going through the book and um, and, and grabbing those. And so this is, um, you know, quite old. And um, yeah, so that is the it's the biggest book <laughs> that I have um, of my vintage collection. The next set of books I got all at the same time again from. An estate sale, but um, I'm happy to say that I didn't actually pay for them. Um, no, I didn't steal them. No, don't even go there. I did not. <laughs> um, you know, we had been there, and um, some other merchandise was uh, from, was purchased from the sale, and I was over there by the the old books and had grabbed them. And the guy just said, you know, we we're trying to figure out the price. He was like, oh, you could just have those, like. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, I don't know if you really realize what he was giving away, but um, yeah, so the first one here, like I said, we're going from newest to oldest. Um, 1914 um, copy of Robinson Crusoe. And I'm just going to kind of like, you know, very carefully um, open up the pages here and, 
you know, hopefully you can get that in the, the camera. But, um, you know, it's, you can see here there's, somebody put their name in here. Um, somebody by the name of Clifton Snowden had owned this at one point. Um, I don't know if any relation to the, uh, the Snowden family uh, that was very prominent in Maryland and I've, I've written about some of uh, the Snowden homes in Ghosts of Maryland. I don't know if he's any relation to them. Maybe. You never know. Um, but you can see here it was um, in a library for, for quite a while. Um, Cumberland, Maryland, 1922. Looks like it was stamped. But this actual but this actual printing here is from 1914. Okay, next, this is a um, first step um, for little feet in gospel paths. I'm trying to be very careful in, in holding this up, um, but it's first steps for little feet in gospel paths. Um, there is on the um, front page here, like I said, I'm trying to be very careful with it. You know, you see... Um, I don't know if you can see that in the camera too well, but basically there's a little note here. Um, looks like uh, Clayton Monroe, uh, son of William L. Wentz, and his wife Rachel was born January 17th, 1889, baptized January 5th, 1891, so he was baptized as a two-year-old. And it says, uh, by, looks like L. Core, K-O-H-R. And then there's some math here, <laughs> trying to figure out an age, uh, 1904, 1889, uh, 15 years. So I didn't actually see a publication date in the book. So the only thing I really have to go on, you know, there's some um, artwork in here that's copywritten in the late 1800s with the 1904 annotation. I'm going to believe that this book um, may have been given in 1904, although the, the type is different, or the printing is different. So it could be, you know, maybe he made that notation later on as a 15-year-old, um, or maybe this was given as a baptismal uh, gift, because there is the, you know, baptized January 5th, 1891. This could have been a gift and given in 1891. Um, so it's it's hard to really note the age on this, um, but I've kind of kept it as 1904 for now. But it may be 1891. You can see, uh, well, no, you can't. I mean, you can see the artwork, but you can't see the small type where it says copyrighted 1882 to 1885, or it could be six by Charles Foster. Is that? Um, you know, and there's some fantastic little pieces of artwork here. Uh, throughout the book, you know, it's it's quite beautiful. You don't you don't really see artwork like that in in books anymore. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's beautiful. So that one is quite old. Then we have um, Gulliver's Travels right here. Um, and this one was uh, I think it was 1886, 1889, something like that. 1896. Okay, so it's possible, depending on the date of this one, um, it's possible that this may be a little newer by a couple of years. If that, if, if this one is really 1891, and this one's 1896, this one could be a little newer. But um, you know, each of course over 100 years old. Um, so I'm trying to be very careful. So and again, there's little uh, pieces of artwork within that are just um, absolutely fantastic. This one is in better shape. Then the other one, the, the pages aren't as fragile. Um, so it's, um, and there's, you know, going over all big. Now this one, this is the oldest book I have. And, um, you know, by, by far, <laughs> by about 30 years. So this one actually dates to the Civil War. Although it's not an American book. So, it's a uh, early German reader from 1864, and inside, and I think you can see that, this is um, some German Gothic script. So 
you know, it's already hard to read, <laughs> kind of scratched in there. And I took um, a few years of German in, in high school, so um, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, which just means I speak a little German, <laughs> um, but not, I'm not fluent whatsoever. But just looking at this, um, I'm kind of like, where, where are some words that I recognize? It's, it's very hard to actually you know, decipher what's in there. So I did a little bit of looking around and discovered that there is actually some older type of uh, script for uh, for the German language that is different than, than today's uh, script. So it's going to take some deciphering. I haven't just, I just haven't had the time to really dive into it. Um, but it's, um, yeah, so you can see here, you know, kind of going through the alphabet a little bit um, and then there's some um, some poems and, and things like that again you know some uh, little illustrations um, you know you can see the you know of course religious undertones and things like that yeah this is 18, 1864 like I said this dates to the uh, American uh, Civil War and you know, you can see, um, so that looks like English, right? <laughs> it's letters. <laughs> we use the same letters. Um, so that is my vintage book haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's, um, you know, I love, you know, obviously I'm a writer, so I love books and, and all of that. Um, you know, it's, I haven't, really had a chance to expand such a, you know this type of collection but it's something that I'm uh, you know looking forward to doing down the road um, anything that's that's old um, ancient archaic um, or has some history behind it you know I, I really love and enjoy and just you know seeing the way things you know used to be done and how things were presented in the past you know as opposed to now I think we kind of like you know get all caught up in um, you know, the here and now and, you know, progress and all that, which is fantastic. Um, but I think we kind of forget about where we've been and just knowledge and information and things, you know, get lost to time. Um, before I go, though, since we're talking vintage and old things and, and stuff like that, I'm going to grab something real quick. Now, this one has me, I don't know, maybe a little baffled. I'm certainly questioning it. And anybody who knows the origins of Chase Michael de Barlow will kind of understand where I'm coming from with at least part of this. Um, if you know what donut seeds are, Chase Michael de Barlow's first ever case was the missing donut seed. But today we are talking Cheerios plus ancient grains. <laughs> yeah, Cheerios with it plus ancient grains. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm, I, kind of trying to figure out the ancient grains part. You know, it's talking oats plus quinoa, kmut, wheat, kmut, and then spelt. And apparently these are all ancient. You know, I I'm hoping that the actual contents of the box aren't ancient, that th these aren't grains that have been sitting in a silo for the last, you know, 2,000 years or whatever. But from my understanding is that the philosophy behind ancient grains is that um, you know the knowledge of the ancients and you know what they had available to the people back then is better than now you know and I know I always talk about you know knowledge that's been lost to time and you know this, this stuff that I try to dig up you know as far as a ghost story and is you know trying to find your know, original history and all that but um, uh, I'm kind of curious with this how we have determined that you know these type of you know, grains from, you know, thousands of years ago or whenever they used them are, you know, supposed to be better than now. Because from my understanding, you know, and this is supposed to be, you know, a healthier thing, people back then didn't live as long. They had a shorter life expectancy, you know, where you know, you're now we're living, you know, 70, 80, 90 years. You know, they were like, 40, 50 years. So I'm kind of trying to figure out the logic how eating food that people ate thousands of years ago is supposed to be better than the food that we're eating now. And by no means am I saying that, yeah, you know, I'm all, you know, let's go for preservatives and all that. 
Although I've kind of wondered about that too, you know, you know, we put all these preservatives in our food, you know, does that preserve our insides as well? You know, maybe that's why we live as long, because the preservatives are preserving our organs. No, I don't really believe that. <laughs> that's just me being silly. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm all for, you know, being healthy and exploring other, you know, food options and, and things like that. I'm just kind of, you know, curious about the logic, how, you know, these particular grains, if, you know, they are what people were eating, you know, thousands of years ago, how it's better now than then if they didn't live as long. Just asking. Okay, so that's me being, you know, silly for about five minutes. Um, and hopefully I will edit a lot of that out and not make this video as long on Cheerios. So I want to thank you for watching, of course. You know, if you like this video, please go ahead and give us a like. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see uh, in the future, what you liked or didn't like about this video. And please, of course, subscribe and uh, keep coming back and getting more uh, content from Haunted Road Media. And uh, also use the hashtag uh, Team HRM and we will have a new video out every Tuesday and maybe some in between on days. But every Tuesday, you're going to get a new video. So until next time.